As I speak, Kevin Harvick is two races away from the end of his career. But I always like looking back on different drivers' careers and thinking what could have changed. What if something had happened or something didn't happen? And we're going to do this today with Kevin Harvick by asking, what if Kevin Harvick stayed at RCR? What if he didn't go to Stuart Haas Racing? You see, Kevin Harvick started his career at RCR in some pretty bad circumstances, but he made the best out of a horrible situation. But over time, because of the friction between he and owner Richard Childress, especially with how disillusioned that he got with the team seeing the Dillon brothers come up the ranks, he ended up leaving the team in 2013 and going to Stuart Haas Racing. And the rest is history. He made the right call. But let's extend our values of disbelief here. Let's say Tony Stewart doesn't call happy over. Let's say that Harvick puts down his grudges, puts everything aside, and signs another extension with Richard Childress Racing in 2013. Well, what changes? Well, in 2013, the team of RCR was Paul Menard, Kevin Harvick, and Jeff Burton, 27, 29, and 31. And the next year, it would be the three-team in Austin Dillon, the 27 stayed Paul Menard and Ryan Newman would go over to RCR. Well, I think Burton still retires. I don't think that changes at all. But I think that Austin Dillon comes up in the three, but instead it is a rebrand of the 31 team. And the 27 gets rebranded to the 31. The 27 doesn't need to stay there, whereas the 3, the 29, and the 31 all have history with Richard Childress Racing. Austin Dillon's there as long as he wants to be. Harvick signs through 2016, as does Paul Menard, but both have a one-year option. Stuart Haas Racing, what do they do? Well, Danica Patrick is coming back for a second year in 2014 in the 10. You got Tony Stewart. And with Newman gone, you get Kurt Busch in the 39 car. There's no reason to rebrand because the 39 team had turned into the 4 team. Well, now, there you go. Newman goes to the 55 of Michael Waltrip Racing for two years. So how does this change 2014 and 2015 to start? Well, in my opinion, 2014 does not see Kevin Harvick going into the Final Four. Neither do I see Ryan Newman making it. Remember that Dylan gets the old 31 team and Harvick keeps his, though RCR was faltering at that point and going down a bit. I think Harvick wins fewer races, maybe two instead of five, and instead of those two making it, it's Jeff Gordon and Brad Keselowski making it. Jeff Gordon gets his fifth title finally. What about 2014? Well, I think Harvick makes the final four, even though he has one win. I also think that Dale Earnhardt Jr. may be in, as Harvick doesn't wreck the field at Talladega as his SHR engine isn't blowing up because he's not in an SHR car, but that could change a little bit. I still see Kyle Busch winning the title, but MTJ doesn't make the final four. And with MWR gone, now Ryan Newman is a free agent, and I think he goes for a stopgap year in the second petty car instead of Brian Scott. So what does 2016 bring? Again, I think Harvick gets a win. The team is struggling, but there still is hope in the horizon, and he is the franchise driver. It mostly plays out the same, though I think that Boyer would still be tapped to replace Stewart at the end of the 2016 season. He'd be the best free agent available. So, I also think Harvick extends that one extra year, as does Menard in 2017, putting RCR to crossroads. While Dylan remains and he will be the future franchise guy, Harvick and Menard are leaving and their sponsors are leaving with them. I think that this team struggles and goes winless for the first time in this timeline since 2009, and most major occurrences on the track stay the same. Now, how does this change going into 2018? This is where the big changes, in my opinion, start coming into play again. Harvick will join Hendrick Motorsports in the number 88 car. At this point in his career, he has 27 career wins, and it's clear that he could be maximized better. The season is split between Nationwide Exalta, Anheuser-Busch, and Jimmy John's on the car. Harvick is ready to go, and he leads a struggling HMS with five victories on the season, and he is able to make the final four, though I don't think he wins. Ryan Newman, on the other hand, well, 
I think that he joins RCR in this timeline as well for a three-year deal, not in the 31, but in the 29 car that is rebranded into the 8 at this time. 2019 is a bit different now. HMS still kind of struggles, but like our timeline, it does pick up again. Harvick matches our timeline, though, as he gets four wins in this season. And he finally gets his first championship in 2019, leading into what will be a much better 2020 for both the team and Harvick alike. Kurt Busch will go to Ganassi's one, being replaced for one year in the number 39 by Jamie McMurray as, again, a stopgap for their now 2020 rookie, Cole Custer, who will be coming up. Due to Trevor Bain's health deterioration and concerns, it's Matt Kenseth who steps in to basically fill in the gap for him. And I think without Ryan Newman going to the six, it is Kenseth who is able to go there and get his 40th and final win in 2019, setting up for a monumental year in 2020 of retirements, movements, and of course, what we all know. Custer, of course, goes to Cup in the number 39, which is rebranded now to the 41. Now, I don't know if Newman gets injured in this or not. We're not going to address that part of it. But what we're going to look at is the fact that he, Jimmy Johnson, Matt Kenseth, and Clint Boyer all will be in their final seasons. And I think in a touching way, Matt Kenseth will be able to fill in the number 17, and they'll go back to the riser front for a year as just a ceremonial way to end out his career. Larson's deal does open the 42 for Ross Chastain and an Alex Bowman who finally gets a chance seeing how he did not get into the number 88 car. Harvick excels though. Part of what helped Harvick in 2020 do so well was his ability to adapt to the COVID climate and in doing so he brought SHR higher even when the team faltered at the end. But in my opinion this doesn't happen in 2020 in this timeline. Hendrick Motorsports only gets better as the season goes on, as shown by Bowman in real life, as well as Chase Elliott. So I think Harvick goes back to back, winning a second title and has 10 wins. The only time on this timeline I think he actually goes a bit past what he did in real life. As in 2021, I think Harvick goes and scores three wins, and he signs a one-year extension, though at this point, it is his last season. He's done. He is going to ride off in the sunset after 2022. But I think because of the shuffling around and signing of Kyle Larson into the five car, instead of Alex Bowman going into that number 48, it now goes to Kevin Harvick, who takes the 48. The 88 still gets axed in this. And honestly, at this point, most of the free agent signings are starting to fall back into place with what we saw in the modern day. So we have 2022 finally come upon us. Kevin Harvick, much like in 2023 in this timeline, is going through his final season. And in my opinion, he actually does get that elusive final win this time at Spring Phoenix, bringing him to 51 total wins in his career. I think age does catch up a little bit with him, and I don't think he makes it much more than the round of 12, maybe a low-level round of 8 entry, but he does not make the final four. Many of today's drivers are now in the same place they are now, except Keselowski will take the 17 instead of the 6, as Bowman is becoming a journeyman. And much like in real life, in 2023 this time, the rookie who takes over for Kevin Harvick in the 48 will now be Josh Berry. I don't think they have Noah Gregson go up there as he's just too controversial for Hendrick Motorsports and he probably goes to Legacy Motor Club or some other lower tier ride in the Cup Series. But with that, that's what I think. There's plenty of different ways this timeline could go. This is just how I see it going. I could be completely wrong. So I want to hear from you. What do you think would happen if Harvick doesn't go to Stuart Haas Racing and instead stays at RCR longer. Do you think this timeline happens, or do you think he does one day end up in the number four at Stuart Haas Racing? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you so much to all my channel members for your continued support, and be sure to watch the NASCAR Weekly Podcast tonight on Black Flags Matters channel. I'll be on there, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So, until then, have a good one.